We're about to watch a video by Adherent Apologetics. He's probably a nice guy, but in my opinion, his views don't match reality. So, here we go. What's up everyone, my name is Zach. I'm going to give you 12 reasons that Christianity is true. So let's get into these 12 reasons. Well, this ought to be good. Reason number one, absolute truth exists. If you say that truth is just relative, that would be a self-defeating statement because that would be an absolute statement. Either God exists or God does not exist. Only one of these options can be true. Okay, I gotta ask. What atheists think truth isn't objective or absolute? The Earth orbits the Sun. This is objectively true whether there are humans or not. This is true whether we know it or not. However, one day our sun will burn out and our planet will be dust. Which means, I guess it won't always be an absolute truth, but it absolutely is an objective truth right now. Whether we're in a simulation, which I doubt, or we're on Earth, it's an objective truth that we're here now, even if some scientists or conspiracy theorists argue over where here is. Why do we need a supernatural deity in order for this to be true? The answer, we don't. Reason number two. The universe almost certainly began to exist. Modern scientific discovery has made it very clear that the universe did, in fact, begin to exist. This can be seen with the expanding universe and the impossibility of an infinite chain of universes. Of course the universe began to exist, but how do we know that? Through science. Not a book that heavily implies that Earth, along with the universe, is 10,000 years old. Evidence that the universe began isn't evidence that a god caused it to begin. Reason number three, the fine-tuning of the universe. There are many constants that fit into precise ranges, and if they did not fit into these given ranges, humans, or any universe capable of supporting life, would not exist. So what you're saying is, we exist because we're in a universe that naturally allows us to exist. Um, okay. How does this prove that the Bible, a book that commands women to marry their rapist, is true? How does this prove a book where slavery is okay, but eating shrimp is forbidden? Oh yeah, it doesn't. Reason number four, objective moral truths do exist. The fact that we know rape is wrong shows that there's an objective moral standard of truth, which could only come from God. <laughs> wow. Let's see what this God of yours did in the Bible, shall we? He drowned every man, woman, and child and disabled person in a flood. He demanded the stoning of gays and disobedient children. He told Moses to kill every man, woman, baby, ox, and sheep. He also created evil and darkness. He sends people delusions so that they will believe lies. He hardens hearts so some people will reject him. He created Judas for the sole purpose of betraying Jesus, and now Judas has to eternally suffer as a result of God's plan. But he's also where we get our morality from? <laughs> yeah, okay. I suggest you watch my video, Objective Morality, The Bible, and Atheism. Reason number five. Millions upon millions of people have experienced personal encounters with God. People all over the world have claimed to have had personal encounters with God. Either all of these people are liars or delusional, or these encounters with supernatural forces have actually happened. Millions upon millions of Muslims claim to have experienced Allah. Does that mean Islam is true? Yeah, I didn't think so. Reason number six. There are plenty of credible reports of near-death experiences. If you look at academic research, there's a lot of reports of stories in which people who are near death experience things that they never should have. These experiences help build the case that there is a supernatural realm. If we have to accept near-death experiences as evidence for God, then you also have to concede that Muslims, Christians, and Hindus all go to heaven when they die, since you can find near-death experiences reported by members of each respective religion. But let me go a step further. Let's say there really is life after death. Okay, how does that prove your God specifically? You see, hypothetically speaking, even if there is an afterlife, it still wouldn't prove your religion or your God or anyone else's God or religion. Here's something else to consider. Even if there is a God, it wouldn't necessarily mean that this God created an afterlife for his creation. 
Or, you know, maybe all these near-death experiences are the result of an oxygen-deprived brain hallucinating. Reason number seven, miracles happen. Like near-death experiences, there are many accounts of miracles happening all around the world. This builds to the idea that there is a supernatural aspect to reality. I find it kind of funny that you don't point to a single case of a miracle. If miracles are happening all the time, all over the world, and happening to billions of people, why don't we have any cases of this? But let me ask you, what's likelier, that the laws of the universe halted for a person to experience a miracle, or that they just think that it did? We humans are very easily deceived, you know. Reason number eight. The New Testament has thousands of copies and no manuscriptal issues relating to major Christian theology. The amount of manuscripts of the New Testament that we have is drastic compared to any other ancient text. What is even more amazing is that even though there are textual variants, scholars can put together very accurately what was the original writings of the New Testament. Even though these manuscripts were written at least 40 years after the death of Christ, let's just assume you're right. We have copies of the originals, okay? What does that prove exactly? We have copies of the original Spider-Man comic book, so does that mean we should believe that Spider-Man really existed and that there is a real Marvel universe outside of space and time? Reason number nine, the disciples died for their beliefs. The disciples were in a position to know whether or not Jesus rose from the dead, and most of them went to their deaths, saying that Jesus did rise from the dead. That puts a lot of support to the claims of these disciples. You know who else feels strongly about their faith? Radical Muslims. They believe in their God so strongly that they kill themselves for it. Does that mean Islam is true? Reason number 10. There are no contradictions in the Bible, and alleged contradictions can be explained. The Bible has no contradictions in it. Most of the alleged contradictions that skeptics bring up have been explained, and if they have not, they will be. <laughs> this is probably the silliest of your claims. The Bible has no contradictions? Well, let's take a look at the Bible ourselves, shall we? Jesus cursed a fig tree, but did it die instantly or overnight? Was there one language before the Tower of Babel or multiple languages? Is God's anger forever or not? Does God tempt people or not? Does God punish people for their parents' sin or not? And who provoked David to number Israel, God or Satan? I could go on and on, but that'll suffice for now. Reason number 11. There are countless fulfilled prophecies in the Bible. The Bible contains around 1,800 prophecies, and many of these can be shown to have come true. For example, take Isaiah 53 which was written hundreds of years before Christ. It talks about a suffering servant from whom the story of Jesus perfectly fits. Is this a coincidence? I think not. <sighs> I'll never understand how or why or where Christians get this nonsense from. There are no prophecies in the Bible that have been fulfilled. Technically, you could say Ezekiel was fulfilled about Israel becoming a nation again, but even then you have to one, personally interpret the verse to be talking about that specifically, and two, you have to ignore that it was a self-fulfilled prophecy even then. And hell, even if we tweak it to make it a prophecy about Israel, and even if we ignore how it was self-fulfilled, even then we have to ignore all the contradictions on top of all the bloodshed contained in the rest of the Bible. Reason number 12. Every other religion is about people trying to reach God, whereas in Christianity, God reaches us. This is what makes Christianity special and one of the big things that drives it apart from other religions. In every other religion, salvation is based off of human efforts. In Christianity, all we have to do to achieve salvation is to repent of our sins, confess, and believe in the resurrection. So you can do that right now and be a part of the family. So thanks for listening. I'm Zach. This is Ed here in Apologetics. I'll see you next time. The main problem I see with that last statement is, you seem to think beliefs are a choice. You seem to think that I, as a genuine atheist, can choose to believe in God, but I cannot. If you don't believe me, try believing that Santa Claus or Odin is real. Go on, try it. I bet you can't do it. Listen, you seem like a nice guy, and you seem smart, and I would like to hear your thoughts on my video, Free Will and the Satan Problem. The link is in the description. 
Until next time, take care.